Hello. So, in this video, uh, we're going to be talking about mathematics as a language. So, uh, we've mentioned sort of in the past how there's this language of mathematics. And in fact, this analogy is sort of incredibly apt, um, by which I mean that really, uh, on top of all the other things we're trying to accomplish in this course, we're trying to um, get to the point where we can communicate the mathematics that we know and the uh, pieces of the solutions, the answers, the different aspects that we're going through. We want to be able to communicate these things in the language of mathematics. And so, in particular, I don't necessarily just mean, you know, the variables, functions, uh, polynomials, and, and using the right language for these things, although there is that as well. Um, but even something that is sort of very basic. So as an example of sort of the difference between regular language, what we call vernacular, um, and mathematics as a language. So by way of example, I could ask you, say, uh, how much, does, let's say, water weigh? So in some sense, this is going to have a numeric answer, right? I'm asking for an amount of weight. Uh, so it sounds sort of mathy. But in fact, this is what we would consider vernacular, regular language. The difference here, and I'm going to sort of go through this even more, is that mathematics is a language about precision, being exact. It is nitpicky by design, OK? So if I say something like, how much does water weigh, that's not enough information to answer my question. In fact, it's not specific, really, at all. I could say, like, well, what do you mean, how much does water weigh? Are we talking, like, a pool, a glass, an ocean? How much water do we have, right? And so I could come back, and in fact, let me do sort of a pseudo dialogue here and say, okay, how much does water weigh? So I guess counter question, how much water? Right? So I could, you know, somebody asks how much does water weigh, I say how much water, right? This is sort of the phase one thing that we talked about before, but this is more to demonstrate the sort of key difference between precise language and vernacular language. So I could answer this. It'd be, OK, okay um, I guess let's say a glass full. A glass full of water. So now at least I have some unit of measurement, a glass, right? I know I'm not looking at an ocean full of water. But again, this is still vernacular. This isn't precise. This isn't a specific known quantity, right? For example, I could ask, like, how big is the glass? Right, so this is an obvious thing. But there's actually more in here that is, again, not being specific enough for math, right? So a glass, well, there's lots of different types of glasses. So how big is the glass? But what does it mean to be full? So how full is the glass? So for example, are we talking this is filled up to like, you know, 90% of the glass is full, so it would be like a standard full drinking glass? Or are we talking that we filled it right up until surface tension is sort of, you know, rounding the top of it and it is absolutely full, any tiny bit more and it would spill out of the glass, right? So what do we mean exactly when we say full? And to really drive the point home, so a glass, not really uh, specific enough, full of water, right? The full, still not specific enough, right? How full is full? And again, I could ask, what kind of water? Now, this seems like a weird thing to ask, right? And in fairness, this one is sort of stretching the point a little, but I'm trying to emphasize what I'm saying here. Because when I talk about water, we are probably talking about liquid water, right? Just like we probably weren't asking how much a, an ocean weighs. But 
strictly speaking, it could be ice, that's frozen water, could be air, that could be you know, uh, gaseous water, so mist, fog, whatever. Um, and all those things would weigh very different amounts, right? And so even at sort of this level, how much does a glass full of water weigh, it is still incredibly vague to the point where like literally every word here, except for like of and a, <laughs> right? All of the words that aren't sort of the basic filler uh, are still not specific enough. In contrast, I could ask, how much does one uh, liter of, and we'll, again, this is probably a little crazy, but specify liquid water weigh. And now I have that I've given a specific volume, uh, really a specific mass and volume, um, depending on how you're looking at these things. Regardless, I've given a specific amount of water. I've specified that it's liquid water, maybe a little aggressive of me, but nonetheless. Um, this is a much more mathematical statement to make. right? This is, I, I've narrowed it down to a specific thing that I'm considering, as opposed to this sort of still vague statement. Okay. So when we talk about mathematics as a language, I, I'm really wanting to drive home here that it really is its own sort of thing symbolically, yes, you know, polynomials, y equals x squared, and all of these things. But it's not just that. It, mathematics as a language is deeper than that. It's this idea of being precise with what you're trying to say, being very exact. This is why um, almost certainly sort of historically, I'm sure at some point in your grade school uh, background, you were trying to do like a word problem and your teacher probably yelled at you for not including units or um, trying to do uh, some like physics or chemistry perhaps and and you they sort of you get in trouble for not being specific enough in your language for not sort of specifying exact amounts or exactly what you're working with and these kinds of things and it's because sort of not just symbols but even just how we're describing things mathematics is as I said, nitpicky by design. It, it needs you to be very precise. And this is a way of looking at and talking about things that is not very natural to people. It's something you kind of have to train. It's not something you would normally do on your own, okay? So this is just to, by way of example um, to sort of get, sort of hammer in the, you know, mathematics as this kind of language as well as the other kind. Um, and again, make sure I don't miss anything. Ah, so there's one other thing I want to sort of mention, which is that um, this kind of stuff, this kind of language, I'm going to point out sort of this one liter, for example, and way, for example. Something I mentioned right at the beginning was it sounds kind of mathy, right? Because the result response is going to be a number. So this sort of mathematical reasoning approach, so mathematical reasoning, which you remember from the phase one bit, this is about uh, translating the sort of beginning question, the vernacular, into some sort of quantified uh, piece of data that you can work with, right? So this mathematical reasoning process sort of only works for specific kinds of information. So sort of by nature, this is a math class. So I'm not going to delve into all the different things where it doesn't work, because the whole point of this class is to learn how to apply it to the places it does. Nonetheless, it's worth sort of keeping in mind and, and recognizing the fact that there are plenty of perfectly valid pieces of uh, information, uh, of things to think about, of things to work with, that aren't quantified sort of results that you can measure and compute and put through formulas, right? So a lot of the humanities, um, psychology, uh, a lot of medicine, these are things that are qualified information as opposed to quantified information. And there's plenty of stuff that's both. Um, so in this class, we'll be focusing a lot sort of naturally on the stuff that can be quantified because that's the point of this type of math. Um, nonetheless, there are plenty of things that don't fall into that category 
mathematical reasoning in those cases really can only get you so far most of the time. All right, so with that, that's sort of, again, the, the broad introduction to using math as a language and sort of approaching things with specificness, right, with, with precision. Um, and this is a theme that'll come up again and again as we continue on in the course, okay? So that is that.